Hello everyone, and welcome, welcome back to Wolf Quest 3, where we are here with the Generation 5 heir to the Dawn Moon Pack, and his little puppies! Look at everybody, you guys! I can't believe that Atlas III finally has his litter as well. They are so freaking adorable. Uh, and also, where are you going? Oh my gosh, Whisper's already wandering off. Then we've got Zephyr and Echo right over here, just laid back. Everybody is actually relaxing and I think having a pretty good day. Yeah, Breeze is playing with Whisper in, over there in the grass. That's so adorable. Oh, look at everybody playing together. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I think that Atlas and uh, our wonderful Breeze are actually getting over the shock of having only three cubs. I actually loved the tragedy that many of you guys talked about in the comment section. This idea that maybe Breeze lost some cubs. We had a few stillborn. I actually think that fits the storyline pretty well. In reality, having three cubs is not unusual. That is something that happens with our wolves, but it's so rare that we have ever ever had a small litter like that, that I do think it kind of adds a little bit to the story to imply that these were just the three that survived and perhaps whatever trauma Breeze has been through in the past made it so she just wasn't able to like keep all of her pups through her pregnancy. That is deeply tragic and sad. Oh my gosh. Are you coming for my pups? You better not be coming for my pups, bald eagle. I see that tail. Go eat a fish. Uh, but I know that sounds really sad. Like here we are with three healthy pups. Why are we thinking about such tragedies? But I actually think that it helps out the story so much to imagine that Breeze and Atlas wanted a bigger litter. They wanted a bigger family. And unfortunately that just didn't happen because of health complications, which means that keeping Zephyr, Whisper and Echo around alive, well and healthy is now even more important than ever. Just having three pups on the one hand is a lot easier like we had with our wonderful Demeter. She did a great job raising her three pups and we did just fine there with Lark uh, even though he got stepped on by a bison. That was a little traumatic and it helped a lot with moving dens but on the other hand like that's three pups and if you lose any of those pups you're in big trouble. So uh, speaking of which I actually need to check. I think yeah, okay, good. We're on challenging, which is what he rolled for the day. Uh, and let's go ahead and check how are our territories doing? Oh dear, we are surrounded by a lot of really strong pushes from what we have now named the Swift Pack. So I wonder, I think, yeah, because these two, the Dark Moon and the Dawn Moon go side by side. Uh, I think we'll go ahead and we will call Crevice Lake the Swift Pack this time around, just like we're calling them with... Um, with B, because we have renamed the Crevice Lake the Swift Pack. And I really wish, I still wish you could like click on their names and you could change their names because then it would feel like you had different wolf packs around you all the time. Prospect Peak is very close. We've not had any run-ins with them, I think? Because I'm pretty sure it was Crevice Lake who chased us away at first. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Crevice Lake who booted us out, but it might have been Prospect Peak. And I, I think that Addy was just so overwhelmed with, oh, that's what it was. His pregnant wife, like his pregnant mate was attacked by the other packs. And maybe something happened to the pups in that attack. And that's why we only have three, which is so tragic. And I think that Atlas, it, he's not really thinking about revenge, but he's now thinking about keeping these ones safe. So let's try to tangle out the, the fighting that has been happening. We're gonna leave our wonderful mate Breeze at the den with the pups and we're gonna try to push our territory out because everybody has enough food for now. So what we really need to do, whoops, sorry, I was trying to, not why, not why, we need to put these ones away. All right, in you go guys. How are they doing on weight? Oh, they're so small. I know that that's good weight. Six pounds and 5.4 pounds are good weight for these little pups, but still it feels like it's so super small and tiny. Ah, oh, all right, and it looks like the weakest territory is immediately to our north. So we're gonna go ahead. Let's make sure Breeze stays. Okay, she's trying to come. Breeze, I can take over territory so much faster if you actually will please, like, go home. Okay, thank goodness. Yeah, if she'll stay with the pups, we can actually howl. If she was with us, we cannot take territory over by howling, and that would make it so much harder. So we're gonna leave her home. And we're gonna push our way north. We don't really need any food. Oh, there's a lot of mule deer running about here. 
Oh, and I can hear the swift pack actually howling in the distance. It's very difficult, but with my earphones in, I can hear it to the left. Oh, look at the beautiful bushes! Oh, I'm gonna do my best not to get too terribly distracted by all of the amazing new flora, but come on, this is just beautiful. Oh, I feel like Addie would be... Okay, you guys could definitely probably hear that howl. Was that them? Is this getting strengthened under our feet? I don't think it is. All right, we're gonna try. I think Alice is gonna risk it. Oh boy. Oh, maybe it was actually Breeze howling out to us to try to like form a bond. All right, well it actually takes down so much more territory when you can howl. Thank goodness, like, Breeze is not here, and we can actually just, like, let off a few howls. So we're gonna try to do that very quickly. There you go, there you go. Alright, good, good, good. 11%. And I think Atlas would be a little, a little nervous. He's, he, I don't think was nervous in his life ever until his mate got attacked, and he realized that he can't just rely on his own strength to always keep his family out of trouble. Because, you know, when there's another wolf involved, like, it's, the situation isn't just about how independently strong you are. Others could come in and, like, hurt them. So I think he's very worried about that. Let's swing around. And because the den is closer to Prospect Peak territory, we'll swing over here and we'll try to, like, push them out a little and do some reconnaissance. We'll see what the east area has to offer. Mule deer, apparently. We might as well just follow their trail out of curiosity. What's that? Oh yeah, there they go. Oh, look at all the logs! Look at all the beautiful plants! Oh my gosh! It's such a joy to run through these fields now. I adore it. Oh, look at these! Oh, the Indian paintbrushes! Oh, you guys, I really truly love all of the new flora that has been added in. The world is even more lush and beautiful and rich and vibrant. It just really makes me so happy to be with our wolves as they push their way through the familiar grasses. Oh, there's a den nearby. Hey, it wouldn't hurt to discover it since apparently we're really good at finding dens. <laughs> That's like the biggest thing Atlas has done is just find den after den after den. We'll snag a lucky rabbit's foot and toss it back. But it might help to find this den. We can only ever go, go to dens after we bite the butt of a bear though aha uh -huh, here we go now we're in enemy territory i guess we'll go ahead and just mark this as like den there we go and the butt kill is going to be gone the ancient den we're at the elk, the elk rush is gone there we go all right so we'll come back and try to search for that but atlas is not interested in finding a new den because we're at the cave den, the traditional ancient cave den, and Atlas only wants to ever hunt at cave dens. You smell anything? No. He only ever wants to hunt, or he only ever wants to keep his, his pups at cave dens because he finds them to be the most secure. And we can only ever move to a new den, any kind of den. And it would have to be a cave den for his challenge. If we hunt a bear, like bite the butt of a bear. All right. Scent post. Pretty strong scent post, but 20%. Oh man, yeah, they've really been in the area. I think Atlas is gonna take a risk. Now that he's not found any other wolves like right away, I think he'd be feeling a little bolder, just a tiny bit. He's not a coward, but he's just uncertain because everything, everything can get out of hand so quickly he's finding. But I think he's finding his confidence in being able to come through here. There's another den nearby. Oh my goodness. All right. I think that was actually our mate howling. So we'll howl back. Yeah, I think that was Breeze. She's not supposed to be howling because she's supposed to be mute. Um, but we'll just say that that's like kind of the... We'll say it's just like the, the confidence that he's starting to develop in our pack. All right. Good, good, good. All right, let's try going south a little bit now. Are we close enough? Okay, we're actually so close to the eastern edges. Because there is another cave den that we had with... Uh, 
Badger? I'm pretty sure it was Badger's cave den. If I'm not completely misremembering. And it was somewhere around here, and he actually did a really fantastic job of raising his pups around here. But Prospect Peak, they can be really touchy. They usually would stay across the other side of the river, but I remember that they were very, very fierce if we did run into them. But usually we could keep them off our backs a little bit if we both stayed on different sides of the river. And I wonder if that's how this is going to be for our boy Addy. Oh, look at the plants! They're so beautiful! It's so fitting that we actually have all of these gorgeous plants in... Oh, here, we'll, we'll go ahead and do a howl amongst them because they're just so pretty. There you go, Addy. I mean, look at how gorgeous this is. It's amazing. There we go. There. I needed a thumbnail. <laughs> But it's so fitting that we have a couple wolves who are really obsessed with bears. And bears love honey, and honey is made by bees, and bees love flowers, that we had the big floral update. I just am so tickled by that. Okay, you know, we're howling, we're not getting any response from competition back, so... Yeah, I think that he's really starting to feel kind of confident about this. Like, maybe we can make something of this. I wonder if I should try cutting them off a little bit more to the east and then swinging around. But I think that's across the river. You can see that's a little bit across the river. So I think we're gonna focus our efforts mostly on just claiming Second Meadow and the surrounding area. So let's go south again. More deer. Oh, what's this? <gasps> There's a mystery thing, a fishing pole. What? We can bring home a weird new treasure to the pack. Oh, you guys. All right, I think Atlas's curiosity is definitely up about this. Huh, and it's across the other side of the river? All right, well, we'll try to get over there. Let's see, this is a little bit shallower, I think. Yeah, look, 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 oh my gosh. Maybe it's a sign we're supposed to like, try to take over some of the river spots. Oh, this is really hard. Hang in there, Atlas. You can do it. Other side. Oh, I actually love that we named him Atlas the Third because, you know, it was the bear butt biting and we were thinking all about bears. <gasps> Here it is, you guys! We just found the fishing pole! Look at this! Stick that humans use while standing in streams. That's hilarious. And we got another achievement! Atlas has actually found a lot of these, which really tickles me. Alright, let's take this fishing pole back home. And maybe what will happen as a result of taking the fishing pole back home is this litter of pups might actually end up becoming one who really like things, who really want to collect things, because there are a lot of collectibles, if I remember correctly. Let's see. Achievements. Yeah, there are a lot of collectibles that you can explore and find. So we have already found the frisbee fishing pole and cooler, but there's a horseshoe, flashlight, shovel, teddy bear, and hat. And how cool would it be if we actually had a challenge where you had to get like at least a couple of those items, like a treasure hunter wolf pup. I could see that happening and I could see that being a lot of fun to work with. All right, let's go a little bit more south. And we're gonna carry this fishing pole back home as a little a little victory prize to our family and see what they think about that this time. Because I think that that would be such a fun way for the pups to kind of start gaining a sense of curiosity that might shape their lifetime quest when they come of age. All right, that's gonna be fun. In fact, as things go on, guys, I would really love your advice on what time of what type of lifetime quest we can give the pups based off of the things that they do. You guys keep such a sharp eye on them when we're running out and about. And so, is that Breeze? I hope that's Breeze and not like a stranger wolf. And so if you guys, what, there's another item over here. Okay, that's it. That's definitely a sign that I think Atlas is supposed to go ahead and potentially go and claim this area. And also maybe his pups are supposed to be treasure hunters. But all right, so thank you guys so much for joining me. Today has been thankfully a very quiet day. Hopefully we'll be able to continue just finding treasure. So we'll actually mark this place as treasure. And we'll try to find it in a bit. 
But hopefully we'll just be able to continue finding treasure, taking good care of our pups, and getting ourselves ready for more adventures and hopefully developing a healthy batch for the sixth generation of our challenge next time. So if you guys could do please leave a like for Atlas now with a fishing pole in mouth. And if you would like to join us on this and literally thousands more adventures, do please consider subscribing. But most importantly, my friends, stay curious and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.